Last week, we told you about how the good people at iFixit had torn down the new iPhone 7 and the iPhone 7 Plus before mine had even arrived. <gasps> I've got mine Don't tear in that hand. one down. I've got mine in hand now, so it's time to take it apart and see what's inside. I'm just kidding. We're not taking mine apart. But we have invited Kyle Ween, CEO of iFixit, to talk about the devices that they tore down. Welcome, Kyle. Hey, thanks for having me. So first, tell us a little bit about the process behind the teardowns. Where do these phones come from? Yes, we have to get the phones as soon as possible because we want to tell people the repairability score before they buy them in the U.S. And so we play the time zone game, which means that we go all the way to the other side of the international date line, and usually we get them in Australia. Uh, this time we decided to mix it up, and we went to Tokyo. So these are Japanese watches or, and phones. And, yeah, and phones. So uh, so who, who do you have that's taking it apart? Is it a team, and is it more than one? How many, how many do you usually uh, use to, to do one of your teardown pieces? Yeah, so we put all of our engineers on this. So every engineer that I fix is working on these teardowns. Uh, the team in Japan, we had three people on the ground. Uh, normally we can do it with two, but this time we had we wanted to do uh, both the iPhone 7 Plus and the Apple Watch teardown simultaneously. So we had two teardowns going on at the same table, and we had one photographer taking shots of both both teardowns at the same time. Uh, which is crazy. It was it was very intense. We were actually limiting uh, limited a little bit by the bandwidth of the pipe that we could get the photos out of the room back to the U.S. I'm assuming part of your teardown is not drilling a hole into the headphone jack area. Right? <laughs> we didn't do that. I, I saw that. This is okay. Yeah, it, it, and it, it actually it seems like it might work because it turns out that where the headphone jack was is just a piece of plastic. So as long as you don't drill too deep. So you're saying that the drilling drilling your iPhone uh, will work? Well, I, I think it, it won't kill the phone. There okay. are other places on the phone that you can drill into that will kill the phone. But it just so happens that if you drill very precisely right there, uh, the phone won't stop working, I think. Well, you think? <laughs> but do you have but the still, tools? still, don't drill right there. Yeah. Do you have the tools to fix it? That's your next thing. We should uh, say, yeah. uh, I probably should have said this from the outset, that iFixit has been a sponsor on the Twit Network. You're not a sponsor of this show, but you have been a great sponsor for a long time. Uh, but this is not sponsored content. Uh, we are not paying you to be here, uh, nor are you paying us to be here. So just now that I got that out of the way. I think we're all just really big fans. <laughs> yes. We like to see you uh, calmly taking things apart for a good reason. And yeah. I mean, we talked a little bit about why you do it, but I mean, talk. why did you get involved in teardowns? What inspired uh, you to start this business to show people what's inside? Yeah, well, I got started just pulling apart my iBook, and I realized that it was kind of a complicated process, and there weren't repair manuals available. And so I decided, well, after I've gone through, like, the first time you take something apart is always the hard time. So once I had gone through the effort of pulling it apart, I knew how it came together. Uh, you know, it came apart and went back together. So I decided to do it again. So I took it apart again. I took pictures, put them online, and they got popular, and the rest is kind of history. We've been doing this for a long time now. I think what scares me the most about doing, like, doing this myself is that anytime I ever take something apart and then I put it back together again, there's always like pieces left over or something extra. I'm like, wait a minute. I've right. got two screws hanging out here. Those used to be inside. Now I have no idea where they go. You've got to have a lot of organization to actually pull this off, right? Correct. And you're not crazy. That actually is really important. Organization is really critical. So I have here, this is an iPhone 7 that we pulled apart. And I've got you know some of the pieces, but then I actually have this is our uh, magnetic mat. This is a sorting tray that we use, and you'll note I've got screws on here, and they're actually it's magnetic. They're sticking to it, and the same thing with these metal pieces. Uh, and this is a dry erase board, so we use this, and we make incredibly detailed notes as we're pulling it apart. Because particularly the first time that we do a teardown, we're very slow and methodical. We have to know where everything goes back in. Because it's important. It's not just like, oh, I'm missing a couple of screws. On the iPhone, there's a couple of screws that are long, longer than some of the others. And if you put the long screw in the short screw spot, you can kill the phone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you have to be organized or you're not going to be successful. Yeah, but if you are sure. and if you take your time and you use tools like this, uh, you can be really successful. We've helped over a million people fix their iPhones. And so if you go to the site, you, there's the step-by-step -step guide through the, um, the teardown and then people can comment on it. Explain a little bit about how that works, the commenting. And is it like a Wikipedia type thing or how does that work? Yeah, so this is kind of like real-time Wikipedia because the whole thing is a wiki, so anybody can contribute, anybody can comment. So as we're writing it, other people are actually making changes to the teardown too, and then we're approving or, or you know taking their suggestions and doing fact checking, and then and then approving their changes. Or people just comment and they give us ideas, or they say, "Hey, look over here." So it's like watching a Wikipedia article be written in real time, 
Uh, and we have experts all over the world that have kind of gotten involved in the teardown process and like to, to tip us off. And there's some people that are just better at Bluetooth antennas than we are. So they'll say, hey, you know, I think that's it, uh, which is really helpful. Uh, so as you go down, you know, we start out it's just trying to figure out how to get inside. And usually that's the hardest part initially is you have a thing like, how does it come open? Right. Uh, and like when we got the first Apple Watch, you know, we had no idea. Like there's no screws on the outside. So how do you get into this thing? And we try a bunch of things. And then, and then if, if there's no obvious way, then we start applying heat. That's the, the very first thing we do. We can't find screws. We start applying heat because we assume there's, there's glue. Uh, and if there's glue, then it takes heat and prying and very carefully kind of guessing where the connectors are. Um, and hopefully we don't break it the first time. But even if we do, then we know what the problems are and then we document it and then everybody else doesn't make the mistake the second time. How many, how many devices do you go through uh, in this process? Because I have <laughs> to imagine there are, there are definitely some casualties, it sounds like. Right. Well, and the teardown is kind of a dry run. It's the first yeah. time we've ever seen inside these things. And we're under a real tight timeline to get the, time, the, the teardown done. I mean, it's from the moment the product goes on sale to within three, four hours, we've got photos online and eight hours, we've got the complete teardown done. So that's really our first glance inside the product. And then we step back and we take a little bit more time and we take a couple more apart and we learn a little bit more and we figure out, did we do everything right the first time? Are there other shortcuts to getting in? And that's the beginning of our research into the repair manual. So writing the teardown really is the dry run for us writing the repair manual. And that's what we're doing right now in, in, the, in the lab next door here where we have a whole bunch of iPhone 7s so and we're pulling them apart and we're writing the repair manual. And so uh, I know you sell the kits as well. Did you have to create any new tools for the kit for the iPhone 7 and the iPhone 7 Plus? Yeah, so we got real lucky with this. Uh, when, the, when the Apple Watch came out last year, uh, we got halfway into the teardown and we got stuck. And it was funny because everybody that was taking apart, you know, sometimes we have competition, there's other people trying to take apart. Everybody got stuck on the same thing, which was this tiny little screw. You know, we're, we're, we're used to tiny screws. I mean, like, like this, here I can, this is about the, uh, the Oops, I don't even know if I can hold this up to the camera. This is a, a screw off of off of uh, the iPhone, right? So this oh is a goodness. screw that's much smaller than a screw off the iPhone. Uh, <laughs> and we run into this screw, and we're like, what do we do? And so we took a diamond file, and we actually filed down and modified one of our screwdrivers to get it open. And then we went back and we, we told our, our uh, tool team, we said, hey, this, this screw is in the Apple Watch, like we have to add it to our toolkit. So we have here, this is our 64-bit our toolkit and this has lots of little bits and drivers for opening things up. Uh, and so we added the Apple Watch bit and we thought it was just for the Apple Watch. Uh, we did that at the beginning of the year and then it turns out the iPhone 7 had the same screw. So I have shipped many, many thousands of toolkits since January that have the tool that you need to open the iPhone 7. Uh, and I think we got lucky and we're the only toolkit out there that can open the iPhone 7. Awesome. Nice. So uh, what about waterproofing? Um, you know, everything's waterproof now. The watch or, you know, the phone is just water resistant, but it's got more waterproofing in it. Um, right. What have you found and does that uh, make it harder for you? Yeah, it's, it's interesting. The way that they did it, uh, waterproofing can make things hard. So on, on some of like on the, uh, the Fitbits, they waterproof the Fitbits. And the way that they do that is they just glue it together. And it's completely impossible to open up and repair. It's really right. frustrating. Uh, Apple uh, did a much better job on this device. So in the iPhone, there are gaskets that go all the way around the edge. And if you look at the teardown, you'll see these little strings, like little white or black strings that are kind of hanging off on some of the photos. Those are the gaskets as we're pulling them free. So they don't get in the way of the disassembly, but we definitely notice them. And then when it comes time to reassemble, one of the things that we're working on is replacement adhesive, replacement gaskets, so that you can rewaterproof it. And what about that dongle, the um, the one, the, the lightning adapter? Have you guys looked inside that? I mean, it's, it's tiny. I was surprised it's when so I got my tiny. phone. It's so small, but do you know what's inside there? Yeah, so the dongle is not possible to disassemble without destroying it. Hmm. So if you have a sacrificial dongle, uh, you can you can take a Dremel or take some kind. And so we have been cutting them open all week and taking a look. And uh, we actually, we, we have x-ray photos that we're excited to be uh, releasing in a couple of days here. Uh, so yeah, the, the initial question about the dongle was, how does this the iPhone drive analog audio if it doesn't have a digital audio converter built into the iPhone? And the answer is there's one built into the dongle. Mm -hmm. uh, and so then I think the follow-up question is, okay, well, is the audio quality of the audio from this dongle going to be as good as the audio quality on the iPhone 6S? Uh, and time will tell. We're doing testing right now. 
Awesome. Yeah, I think that we, I, I looked it up and there was like a Vietnamese site that, that did it, but not as neatly as you guys do. They yeah, we're they, working on it. They sort of broke it open, but we don't need to show that. It's, <laughs> it's challenging. I mean, we destroyed the first couple. Like we, we just destroyed them in such a way that we couldn't take pretty pictures. So then we had to get more. Uh, it is uh, it's it's just glued together. There's no they, you know, they took they took uh, plastic and fused it. And there's no there's no way in. Well, I mean, the reason why I asked is because people were having trouble with it at first. They were, you know, saying they had it on their old headphones. So they, they had to, they'd use their old headphones and they'd attach the, the dongle. Um, right. And then it, they wouldn't be able to answer the phone, you know, if they weren't listening to music or something. So obviously mm. there's something in there. Um, I guess that, that's that been fixed with an update, though. It sounds like that was a software glitch, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and I think people are having that problem just with the, the regular uh, Lightning headphones. So all of a sudden, they're welcome to the world of software. Like the analog was bulletproof. Uh, and we've been used to analog headphones for a long time, and all of a sudden, you're in the world of digital software and software, you know, it's updates and bugs, and you're going to have timing issues with the OS, and it's just a higher level uh, inside the the operating system, and so it's going to be buggier for a while until they deal with everything. Mm -hmm. But they made room for that plastic thingy, thing, <laughs> thing yeah, whatever it was. So, so do you, do you want to know what the plastic thingy was? Yes. It was a vent of some sort, right? It was a vent. So uh, in order for the GPS to work quickly, it really needs to know what elevation the phone is at because the angle that the satellites is different if you're at the top of a mountain versus at sea level. So they have an altimeter uh, inside. And the way an altimeter works is using a barometer, which t t uh, checks the, the air pressure. But if you make the phone waterproof, you also kind of make it airproof. And so air can't get into the, the barometers. So there's no way in your waterproof phone. Uh, to tell what the air pressure is. So they actually built what they call a barometric vent, which sounds like something you'd find at the bottom of the seafloor. Uh, the barometric vent is a little one-way vent, uh, and the, the plastic doodad gives basically access from the air outside the phone to a part on uh, uh, the sensor inside the phone. It's kind of slick. Hmm. Okay, so switching gears a little bit from Apple devices to devices in general that you have, you guys have torn apart. Um, if if I was to ask you the most surprising thing that you've discovered in your teardowns, would, would you have an obvious answer for that? <laughs> you know, we take so many things apart. Um, I was surprised. I took apart a Keurig the other day, and I didn't realize Keurigs have more electronics in them than a laptop does. <laughs> They're, I mean, a lot of them have, like, have touch screens on them. They're very sophisticated. We talk about DRM on our coffee. Hey, this is a real thing. Um, <laughs> So that was surprising. You know, I've been really pleasantly surprised by some of the products we've taken apart from Dell and HP lately. Uh, HP has a tablet, the Elite X2, that's a competitor to the iPad Pro uh, that got a 10 out of 10 on the repairability scores. Phenomenally designed. And it's actually thinner than a lot of the Apple tablets. So do you have a Moby Dick, like a white whale of teardowns, something that you really uh, <laughs> want to get inside badly? I want to take apart Elon Musk's new rocket. <laughs> I think that would be a blast. You know, when, when the rocket blows up, they call the RUD a rapid unscheduled disassembly. <laughs> and I would like to do a slow scheduled disassembly. <laughs> <laughs> With lots and lots of cameras. Yes. Uh, yeah, you should say, you should t tweet him that. I mean, he's, he's very we'll active on Twitter. See, we'll see. see what I'm he sure, says. I'm sure you could yeah. sacrifice one of those for yeah. There you go. We ordered the Model 3, so that may be the first uh, oh. test. Wow. Oh, that's awesome. Well, of course, you do all this in the service of the environment so that we buy less and we fix what we have instead of upgrading all the time. And we appreciate that. And, and the I'm Earth sure. does, too. <laughs> Uh, where can people find you? Yeah, we're at ifixit.com, and we have instructions for thousands of things. It's not just electronics. We've got clothes and bikes and cars and you name it. Anything that you have that's broken, you got to be able to find instructions on iFixit to get it repaired. Awesome. Cool stuff. Kyle Weens is the CEO of iFixit, and he's kweens on Twitter. Thanks so much for joining us. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, Kyle. <laughs> Take care.